Hello, uh, my name's Austin Jarrett and I'm from Allet Mowers. Today what we're going to do is take a brief look at a comparison between our Liberty 43 mower and our Sterling 43. These are both 17 inch wide mowers and the Liberty we've been uh, selling now for about six years. It has become our most popular mower. We sell more mowers, uh, more Liberties than we do of any other model. And we've recently launched the Sterling. And the, these are both 17 inch mowers before you now. And I wanted to talk through the comparisons between these two mowers to help you make your choice. To start with, the Liberty is available in three widths. So we're looking at the Liberty 43 and the comparisons are just between these two mowers. But there are, this one does have smaller sisters in a, a Liberty 35 and a Liberty 30. Those are 14 inches and 12 inches. The Sterling is available in two widths. This 17 inch model, the Sterling 43, and there's also a Sterling 51 and that's a 20 inch wide machine. So when you're choosing between the two, if you've got a large lawn and you need a 20 inch wide machine, then you really already are going with the Sterling model. The Liberty has been one of, well, has been our best seller and it's also our first battery mower that we launched. And of course you're getting all the advantages of being able to create a really beautiful lawn. That's what Alec mowers do. Uh, and it doesn't matter which mower you have here, they are both going to create your beautiful lawns, just be absolutely clear about that. You're already into cylinder mowing and you understand the advantages of cylinder mowing and how that makes long term a much better lawn and, and creates really wonderful stripes. It's battery mower, so it's quiet and of course there's no emissions and there's no engine that you've got to start, keep running evenly uh, and, and the advantage of battery power, of course, is I don't need to now be storing petrol. So I get all of those advantages, and of course those advantages are, are battery advantages, and you get those two in the Sterling. So the battery really isn't so much about, about the comparison, uh, and we're not comparing uh, battery power with the, uh, the, with the power and, and the issues that there are with petrol engines. So it is really just a, a, com a comparison. So, you know, what are the overriding differences? I'll, I'll, I'll start with the, the bigger picture stuff between the two. So price is one of the big things. Uh, this mower is nearly twice as much money. The Sterling is nearly twice as much money for the 17 inch machine, direct comparison with the Liberty. Um, so that is obviously a, an extremely big factor. And what I'm here to do, I suppose, is to show you the differences in the specifications of the two machines so that you can justify that extra cost. There's no doubt at this price point here, this mower creates beautiful lawns. And I don't want, to, I don't want anyone to think that it creates any less beautiful lawn. Probably what this mower does is it, it does it easier. The adjustments of the machine are better. Uh, the machine is of higher specification generally, and we're going to be going through all of those different points uh, as well. But the ease of use of this machine and the specifications is why you're paying the extra money. And we say clearly this mower is for a lawn fanatic, but this mower probably for a lawn connoisseur and it's just a very slight difference, uh, but I'm going to talk you through those specifications now. So first thing is probably to do with the, the battery platform itself. So we chose initially uh, to be working with Greenworks and we have a really uh, good and reliable battery system in this 40 volt battery. The machine comes, if you order it in a bundle, with a 4 amp hour battery and this is enough to mow really quite a large lawn. You can mow, depending on the grass length and a few other things, easily 400 meters squared with one discharge. With the Sterling, we've chosen to work with Ego on this. And this is the Ego battery. This is a 56 volt platform and the machine comes as standard with a five amp hour battery. Now, the voltage is really not really that important. It's about really to do with the energy that's within the battery itself. 
and the 40 volt 4 amp hour battery from Greenworks you need to work out the wattage and I, and I have about 144 watts available in that battery and that's about the energy that I've got and how much grass that I can mow. In this 56 volt 5 amp hour battery I've got about twice the amount of energy with 280 watts. So I can mow a larger lawn in one discharge and again the choices are that I can buy additional batteries or I can wait and recharge a battery depending on which way I want to do it uh, to mow a larger lawn with the Liberty if I need to but this comes, uh, comes as a standard bundle with the 5 amp hour battery uh, and about twice as much energy. I do also have options within Ego as well to be buying much larger batteries so I can go to 12 amp hours that's uh, about 680 watts of energy so you know about two and a half times the amount of energy uh, in a much bigger battery and that just slips into the same slot so if you have a larger lawn again this is where the sterling comes into its own and especially if you're going to a 20 inch wide machine The weight of the machines is also different. So I've got about with the battery and with the grass box on with both of these, I'm going to be making, uh, give you the comparison. This is 40 kilograms and this is 53 kilograms. The 20 inch is, is a little heavier uh, than this one. So what does that mean? Well, I guess realistically, if you need to be picking this mower up and taking it up and down steps, then certainly the lighter machine is easier to carry. Uh, stripes, there's, there's no doubt that the weight of the mower is also um, has a really uh, an effect on the stripes of the lawn and how contrasting light green, dark green they are. Not so much from when I've just mown, it's, it's re in fact you can't tell the difference, but the stripes just last that little bit longer with a heavier mower. And our bigger, more professional machines, when they start to get up to 200, 300 kilograms in a mower, definitely lay down a stripe that lasts even longer. So that, that's a, there's definitely the relationship between the weight and the stripes. Of course, the heavier mower as well takes more energy to move, so the battery uh, uses the energy of the battery more quickly, but I have more energy in this battery uh, that comes as standard with the Sterling bundle. These are the two grass boxes from the Liberty and the Sterling, and you can see we've gone for a completely new style of grass box. And listening to our customers, when we wanted to come to a higher specification machine, we asked them what the things that they wanted to see uh, on the new model. And it, one of the things was about the weight of the grass box. So this uh, grass box is extremely sturdy and extremely robust. I'm not gonna do that with this, with this box. Uh, and it comes in at three and a half kilograms, just the box itself before it's filled with grass clippings. Whereas the grass box that we're using now on the Sterling is 2.3 kilos. So uh, it's not a lot of weight, uh, but it, it, it's just one of those things that, that makes a difference. You'll notice that this is a steel frame and cloth. And the other reason that we use that is because the flow of the grass clippings is better into the grass box and the perforations in this material allows when the grass clippings are thrown in with air, uh, paddled into the, the grass box, the air is, is able to get out uh, through the material and the grass clippings separate and stay within the grass box. So we get really exceptional grass box fill on the sterling. Uh, as I say, this is robust and it's heavy, it's going to last you a lifetime, but there is also some lips just inside this grass box as well. So when it comes to emptying, you have to give this a bit of a shake, whereas on this grass box, it's the throat, if you like, is completely open and it just makes it much easier to empty out in one go. The next difference is the amount of power that we have available to be able to do mowing and probably more importantly cultivations of the lawn. We have a single motor in the power head of the Liberty which is about 410 watts. With the Sterling we have drive to the cylinder with one motor and drive to the rear roller with another. The cylinder drive is a one kilowatt motor on this, 1000 watt, and we have a 210 uh, watt motor on the rear roller drive. So that gives us more power to the reel to be able to do uh, different jobs. But when it comes to mowing, actually, you don't need all of that power anyway. Um, I've got sufficient power here for, for, for 
really all the operations with this 400 watt. This just does it deep, um, better and, and because I've got some other differences in the cartridges which I'm going to talk about later then that extra power is necessary when we want to do deeper cultivations. The advantage of having two separate motors as well is that uh, with this I engage the cylinder drive by pressing the button here and when I want to go forward I have to have the cylinder running whereas on the Stirling I have one motor that drives the rear roller and I have a separate drive which drives the cylinder so that allows me to transport the machine around easier without having to have the cylinder running and of course it does make you a little bit nervous if, if you were driving this mower over gravel for instance and you wouldn't want to risk the stones going into the cylinder which is being driven. It's a very small difference uh, and in some situations it might be important and in others not. Next let's talk about handlebars. Handlebars are really important uh, to the user because they are the interface between us and the machine and, uh, and how we control it. And on the Sterling, we decided that we needed to work harder on the ergonomics. So for me, the natural position for my hands is, uh, uh, is like this, and my wrists are in a nice neutral position. And we've achieved that with this design of handlebars. The control side of things, because we only have one motor on this machine, then to drive the cylinder, I press down the safety button and then engage the drive. When I want to drive the machine forward, I have to have the cylinder turning and then I engage the bail bar on the underside of the handlebars. All really functional. Uh, I've also got a speed control on this machine that I can adjust from one through to six. When I go on to the Sterling handlebars, I now have two motors that I need to control. So to start with, I have the motor uh, for the real drive, I press down the safety button and then pull this bail bar. But I don't have to have the reel engaged in order to be able to drive the machine forward. That's on a separate control and I have two buttons, a left hand and a right hand, that are built into the handlebars. And I just simply press those for the drive of the cylinder. And I can use either thumb button for that uh, so that one thumb doesn't need to get tired. So we really like this new system that we have here but we do have to control these two separate motors and we think that's all really integrated nicely. I have speed control on here, uh, just here with this uh, rotating knob that's built into the uh, and integrated into the handlebars and I have 10 different speeds. This is a faster machine than the Liberty, so I can cover the ground quicker if I want to, but I can also really creep it and go very slowly. So I go from off position, where that doesn't work at all, and in my first click, the speed of the machine now is really quite sedate. And that's really useful if I'm doing deep cultivations, because we're going to talk about deeper cultivations with this machine later, but when I'm working deeper, I want to go slower as well. Uh, so that's, that's all built into the handlebar set there. The other thing about comfort in the handlebars is to do with the height. Now with this uh, Sterling machine I've got options where I've got uh, a tromboning element here. There is one hole that's built into this when it's delivered and we believe that that suits most people. Uh, because I've also got adjustment here where I pull this lever and I've got three positions that I can have these handlebars at for height as well. If I really wanted to, and I was finding that I either need to go much taller or much shorter, it is possible just to drill a hole into the side here and create a new position that's perfect for you. For putting this into the storage position as well, I can adjust the handlebars up to this position to make the footprint much smaller. The Liberty is a bit more basic in that I've got uh, two positions where I can adjust the height, where I have to remove this cross threaded crossbar here, and then I've got two positions here. It doesn't give me an awful lot of range. Uh, the handlebars are at a nice, good height anyway, as you can see, very comparable. But then when I want to fold this up for storage, I can do this. And so it makes the machine much lower, but actually the footprint doesn't end up being smaller.
We've already talked about the weight of these two machines, coming in at 40 kilograms, the lighter machine, 53 kilograms. So if you're gonna pick these machines up, then of course that makes a difference. The most important thing though, for maneuvering the, the mower around the lawn, is the weight that it takes, the load that it takes, to push the handlebars down, to push it onto its rear roller, to be able to turn and maneuver. Although the Liberty coming in at 40 kilograms is actually just takes a little bit more load on here. Uh, we're talking about 5.8 kilograms if you want to actually measure that. Whereas on the Liberty uh, coming in at 53 kilograms, this only takes 4.4 kilograms. A very small difference, but just so that you know that the heavier machine isn't actually heavier to manoeuvre around the lawn. And when you compare that with to a rotary mower, where a typical rotary mower would have a much longer deck on here, the weight being further forward, they normally take a lot more load. They do take a lot more load in order to manoeuvre around the lawn. So just something to bear in mind. The business end of these mowers, of course, is the cutting blades. Both of these machines come with a standard six-bladed cutting cylinders, and you'll find lots of videos talking about cylinders, but actually now it's about the bottom blade. So we have made changes to the cartridge, uh, and we call these ultra-change cartridges as opposed to quick-change cartridges. We'll talk about cartridge changing shortly, but the main consideration is the bottom blade is much more rigid on this machine. We have more power available to us and we can cut more grass, but the thicker blade means that it's easier to set and it's more rigid and more resistant to stone damage or stick damage uh, in that really vital scissor cutting action that we have on these cylinder mowers. So that business end on the Sterling is, is a really quite major improvement. Of course, it adds cost to the machine, but that should mean that we can set that cylinder more easily and that we can set it so that the cylinder is quieter. And let's talk rollers. The rollers on both of these machines are steel, galvanized, and with bearings. They are, in fact, exactly the same bearing. Both machines have the turf rake just behind the roller that rakes and combs the grass and improves the, the contrast on the stripe. So those are the same. When we get to the rear roller, the rear roller on both machines do have the split and the differential system in exactly the same way. So by splitting the rear roller, uh, it allows the drive to uh, uh, allow these to go at different speeds. So when we're turning at the end, then we don't scuff. And when we're trying to straight line, it allows the drive to be consistent, but allows us to steer the machine to keep the straight line. The significant difference is that we've added something significant into this again. So a slightly heavier machine, but can we make it easier to handle once we're on the lawn? And we've done that our clever engineers have designed into the, the, into the drive of the rear roller what we call glide drive. And that, what that means is when we're not got any drive to the rear roller, this machine just pushes and pulls really easily. It's not driving the motor and it makes the machine feel very much lighter on the turn. The resistance on the Liberty is just a little bit more. It's not a lot but it does feel significantly different when turning uh, and the effort that's required to turn at the end of the lawn. Height of cut, really important on a cylinder mower. It's absolutely critical to us. And the Liberty has a screw system here so that by, I can lift and lower the front roller, which changes the position and height of the bottom blade and the height of cut or the depth of the cultivation cartridge if I have one of those in. And so this is really nice and very accurate. It lifts and lowers the front roller. The indication though is we have a series of numbers in the side panel here that we can get right down and have a look at. The numbers in there are S for scarifying, our lowest height of cut, up to four. And with that, we have to use those numbers 
that don't represent either centimetres or inches, it just gives us a gauge. And of course, when you're using the mower regularly, you get to know what those numbers are and you can always return to that height that you use very easily. We've taken that to the next level now with the sterling. The sterling, we have this dial up at the top here. It's very easy to turn, but more importantly, what we've got is an indication on the side here. And as I alter this, I can alter my height of cut really simply and easily and know exactly to the millimetre what my height of cut is. I have the scale for height of cut with the cylinder on one side and then on the other side I have my indication of depth in millimetres when I have the cultivation cartridges in. And for those of you that prefer inches on the right hand side then that is all scaled in inches too. The height of cut on the two machines, the range is different. I can go to six millimeters with this machine as low as I, as low as I can go is six millimeters and as high as I can go is 32 millimeters. So that's quarter of an inch up to an inch and a quarter. With the sterling, again, we've extended that range. We can go as low as four millimeters and we can get up to uh, 50 millimeters. That in inches is about three sixteenths of an inch up to two inches. So I've saved the best till last and that's about the cartridge system. You know at Alit, we know that cylinder mowers mow the best, but it's the cultivations that you do to remove the thatch and keep thatch under control and to cultivate the lawn, which really gives you an outstanding lawn. And this cartridge system that we have in the Liberty, where we can put the whole range of cartridges in, is, is one of the main factors of why you, you, you choose a machine like this, where you can mow beautifully and cultivate well to make sure that the lawn remain, remains healthy. And you can change this cartridge, the mower cartridge here, in about three minutes. And you need your Allen key, so you need a tool, and you remove the four screws in the side casing you remove two screws one here and one here and then that allows you to remove the cartridge and if you put me in a Grand Prix style tyre change cartridge change situation I can do that in about three minutes from start to finish but significantly what we've done with the sterling is made that element of the cartridge change so much more simple and we're now not talking minutes, we're now talking seconds. So to change the cartridge, we have two tabs that we need to lift. We have this lever, which we need to release, and that in itself allows me to remove the cartridge. So it's so much more quick than we've ever experienced before. I can change the cartridge, insert it, put these two tabs in, and put the drive in place and the guards come in and cover up so that we can't get our fingers in there at all. And that is one of the really most beautiful things about this machine. Both the Liberty and the Sterling accept the range of cartridges that we have and there are a few small changes and differences. Uh, the shore blade system with a thicker bottom blade on the Sterling makes it easy to set and easy to set so that it's more quiet. And on the 10 bladed cylinder, we actually just thin off that thicker bottom blade just at the mowing point, which allows us to mow even lower. So people are using now the Sterling on bowling greens because we can achieve this four millimeter height of cut with the 10 bladed cylinder. Our favorites, again, the, there's been no changes in the blades or the spring tines in the Verticut and the, uh, and the Scarifier. Uh, but what we are able to achieve with the sterling is deeper cultivations. So with both of these we can go 10 millimetres deep, which is probably more than we need. And just because you can go deeper doesn't mean that you should always go deeper. Remember our little and often to get a perfect lawn. Uh, but the additional depth that we can achieve on the sterling really is a game changer when it comes to the cultivations. Dethatcher, uh, again, a wider blade spacing goes even deeper down to 14 millimeters deep and I'm really loving that cartridge for being able to cut slots 
to assist and help me with my overseeding program. Because I can get that little bit deeper, I can make sure that the seeds that go into the slots get much more likely to get soil contact rather than just sit in a, a wetting and drying out thatch, which doesn't give me a good germination rate. Another thing that we've done which is different, uh, the brush for the uh, Liberty is quite a gentle brush and we've stiffened that brush up because we now have more power available to us with the Sterling and this brush is fetching out about four times the amount of material when I want to brush and really helps again to groom and to stripe the lawn. If I want to incorporate top dressing or brush out worm casts, then this is much more effective and this is only available for use in the Sterling because I need the extra horsepower to be able to drive that. So along with the really speedy change that we have, the ultra change cartridge in the Sterling, it just means I find when I'm using my lawn mower and I decide that I want to do a little bit of scarifying or verticutting, it's just so easy to swap it over that I don't hesitate to do that extra cultivation when it's needed and when the conditions are right. The real speed on the Sterling is just slightly higher and in particular when I'm using the Verticut but especially when I'm using the Scarifier cartridge, especially in my battle against my annual meadow grass and Yorkshire fog grass weeds, that extra speed and being able to slow the machine down without reducing the real speed means that I get some really special results with the cultivations. So if you're spending time cultivating, it's because you're really into the detail of your lawn, then the speed control of the forward speed and the higher speed of the reel means that you can achieve a wider range of results in your cultivations. The extra speed of the reel as well means that it throws the grass box, uh, th throws the debris into the grass box so much more effectively than it does with the Liberty and especially at slower speeds on the Liberty where the reel isn't going quite so fast. So to wrap up and in conclusion, I feel like I'm really making a comparison here between an E-Class Mercedes and an S-Class Mercedes. They're both really good machines, they both do the job really well. If you're really into the detail and you have the budget, then the Sterling is definitely the way to go. But if you want a fantastic lawn on a, on a more limited budget, you can achieve all of the same things with this Liberty machine. So the choice is yours. I hope that what we've described uh, helps you to make that choice. Uh, if you already have a Liberty machine, one thing that we did determine in, in very early design is that we said that you've already bought a whole range of cartridges and if you upgrade from the 17 inch Liberty to a 17 inch Sterling, you can don't have to buy all of the cartridges and there's a simple adapt to, uh, adaption kit which allows you to use all your cartridges from your Liberty in your Sterling of the same width. And that same applies if you're using a 20 inch Kensington petrol machine and want to go electric for the 20 inch machine, then you can do exactly the same with that. So I hope this video has been helpful and allows you to make a well-informed choice.